Welcome to the Financial Advisory Podcast. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Financial Advisory Podcast. Mm. I'm pretty sure today's episode will have any advice or anything financial related, but it's a special episode for me. Um, if you look up statistics on podcast, if you make 21 episodes, you're in the top 1% of podcasts worldwide. And <clears throat> we're there. This is it. And I thought that for this episode, I decided, you know what? Let's take a pause. Let's do a different, a little bit different, more of a celebratory. And I want some close friends of mine that have known me for a lot longer than I've been doing podcasts. And I wanted them on the episode. So I'm going to introduce everybody individually. We're all linemen. Um, I'm still linemen. That's right, guys. Don't forget about that. I'm still <laughs> the best lineman I know. <laughs> you know? But um, so we got Matt Simonini, Steve Wagner, and Josh Shout. So welcome to the show. Thanks for coming, guys. Great. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Congratulations so, on that's cheers. episode. Let's cheers, man. Got some podcasts. Glasses now, too. Cheers. I'm surprised Josh didn't cheers to a racial slur. No, not today. My good. Thank God. <clears throat> we, we got that much left. <laughs> <laughs> we got still, long. Still early in the podcast. Still early, buddy. <laughs> so, yeah, the whole 21 episode thing. I mean, Ace was, I think, maybe one of the first, first people that told me about it. Um, or maybe somebody, but I had to actually Ace look this up right before the episode started. I'm like, hey, yeah, I heard this like six months ago or three months ago, whatever, but I haven't fact checked it. So we just fact checked that right before we started. So yeah. it's a real thing. Ace, congratulations. You're part of this too. Never really on camera as much, but I mean, you're still part of this just as much as I am. So thank you so much. <clears throat> Let's get into some stories, man. I think uh, some of the best <clears throat> podcasts are unscripted and storytelling times. Why don't you guys, one by one, like, when you guys first heard I was leaving the line field and, and venturing out and doing a different um, career, you know, what was your first thought? I mean, we'll start with Steve, who I've known the longest, and kind of see, like, you know, what was your first thought? You and I kind of talked about it before it happened, and you know, I was really close to getting a neck tattoo, if you remember. You <laughs> talked me out of getting one. <clears throat> so right. What was your first thought when I said I'm out of here? Uh, <clears throat> I think I remind you that they have HR departments. <laughs> you did remind <laughs> me of that. Uh, that was probably the first thing I said. Yep, yep. Um, I wasn't sure you could get past that one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so you thought that my, my biggest obstacle would have been the HR department? Yeah, yeah 100%. Okay. okay, fair enough. Yeah. That's a very fair uh, uh, comment and, and concern. You yeah. know? Um, I think that was – was that before the, the – oh, that – you did want to get a neck tattoo before that, actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, so uh, I thought I was always going to be a lineman. I was doing good as a lineman, and who gives a fuck, right? I mean, the hand tattoo is already there, so who gives a shit? And I was, like, talking to Steve about it. He goes, man – you're on a different trajectory. You're kind of doing other things besides line work. Like, just don't yet. Just don't yet. Yeah. And I'm like, God damn it, Steve. Like, you always give me dumb dumb advice. You know, that was good. One. <clears throat> dumb good advice. I'd, I know. Yeah. I was right. I was absolutely feeling. right. I had yeah. a feeling. Yeah. 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 What about you, Matt? What was your first thought when you first heard it? Uh, I was <clears throat> surprised, but not entirely. Okay. I mean, you've always been into other ventures outside of line work. Sure. So you've always had other things going on. You've always had the entrepreneur mindset. So right on. wasn't really surprised. Uh, I didn't know, obviously, how it was going to go. I'm glad it went as well as it has. Yeah. You know, congratulations on that. Thank you. you made some moves, like, real freaking fast. I was like, damn. Yeah. It worked out. It did really well for me really quickly. I think a lot of it was because of the, you know, being a lineman, how close we all are. Right, and it's like if you've been watching me for a long time, or you've trust <clears> me building power lines, like, well, I know this guy's been on the up and up doing this. Like, what's the difference, right? And I think that was the biggest thing was having that established trust and um, seeing me win already, right? I was already winning, so it's like, okay, well, let's see what he's doing over here. This makes sense enough. Let's listen, right? Because as linemen, I mean, fuck, if anybody comes into our world and tries to give us advice, we're like, fuck off, dude. Like, it could be a marriage counselor, it could be a financial advisor, it could be anybody yeah. who's not a lineman tries to tell us what to do. Get fucked, dude. We don't want to hear it. Because usually they're either A, full of shit, or B, they just don't relate to what we're doing. Right. You know, like, yeah. Well, there's only, there's always something you get two linemen to agree on. It's that the third one's doing it wrong. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's a fucking great point. And yeah, when it comes to this, it's like a lot of the financial advisors of the world weren't necessarily doing things wrong, but they couldn't break through and talk to you guys. You know, they couldn't get it a point. They couldn't get it across in a way we understood it. We're like, hey, you know, they couldn't dumb it down enough. That's not a... That's not being condescending. It's like, how do we make it simple? Not talk over them, but talk to them, right? And right. I think I had a pretty good knack for that. That's, you know, what got my on my hot start, and I just kind of branched off from there. But what about you, Josh? What was your first thought process? I mean, I figured you are just fucking crazy enough to make it all work. <laughs> I've seen yeah. the other shit take place, yeah. you know, the houses and the other yeah. stuff. 
work. Yeah. And I figure you take that fucking savage mentality into the next venture and it would either work or fucking crumble one of the two. Yeah. And I think I had the, the ticket in my pocket to come back. Mm. Yeah. You, but the pride enough to never want to come back. Right. Yeah. Like, right. I, I could, well, the cool thing was, yeah, of course I can come back. Right. But like how, yeah. you know, for me, it would have been super embarrassing to come back and, 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 and I would have got shit for maybe a month. Right. If that, I would have been fine. But if like, that. but that mentality of like, I'm not going to let these guys see me fail. I'm going to fucking make it work. And it worked. So. Yeah, and that's no. a, that's a, that's the drive right there. Yeah, I mean the drive is, the drive is not only, not wanting to, or have to come back. Yeah, and then when you get, I mean you you went from zero to a hundred, just like, just like you were doing power lines. Mm -hmm. I mean you guys are working fucking seven days a week. Yeah, fucking hammering out. I wasn't work. working seven days a week. I well, to, I forget which about is that. even fucking better. I was <clears> so <throat> funny story. I was on the clock seven days a week. Exactly. Yeah. So I'll, yeah, I'll tell this. Them. I'm not sure if I've ever told this story publicly, and I, and I know. And I want to get it out there and, you know, if it comes back to bite me, it comes back to bite me. But one of the things that was a catalyst for me leaving this career was <clears throat> I got fired for the only time in my entire life for basically being really good at my job and getting away with so much for so long. I kind of got lazy on it. And what it was doing was we were all working seven days a week for years. And I found a way to bank the time to where I was doing enough work in five days to look on paper. I was doing enough work for seven days. I did that for two years. I averaged two days off a week for two fucking years. And finally I got caught because I was on vacation and my guys fucked me and they ended up, it's a long story, but they ended up basically going home too early. The GPS is on the big trucks and I get home and, you know, and, and they finally, hey man, can't have that. We're out of here. What bothered me about that was I was not the only person doing that. You know this as well Fuck as I facts. do. I was one of many people doing it. Probably the best at doing it as far as the amount of time off and the, <laughs> the, the production. I was, you know, top three to five production you know, and still taking all the time off. But I was a newer guy in the yard, right? I was only there for three or four years. Um, but I was killing it, right? And then um, I got to a spot where I was like, this is kind of boring. And we all know in our job, boring is complacent and complacency kills, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when I got fired, it fucking wrecked me. I was like, I can't believe I got fired. I didn't get a warning. I didn't get a, a day off, a week off, nothing. It was like, fuck you, you're out of here. I'm like, and my guys on my crew who benefited from me doing that for them, they were, they were, they didn't get fired. I was pretty burnt up about that. But then, you know, I ended up leaving and then um, went to Hooper and did just fucking fine. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm back. But always, that always in the back of my mind burned me. Like, no matter how good you do, you're just one fuck up away from being fucked, right? And in this town, there's only three contractors. So I was like, it kind of like put a, it planted a seed. <clears throat> and then, and then it was like, well, I'm working all this fucking time, seven days a week. You know, I was working out in, uh, fuck, where were we? Fort Lupton. What's, what's out super far east? That, oh, shit. That, that Hooper Morgan. job. Fort Morgan. Yeah, there Fort you go. Fort Morgan. Yeah, and, and even Deer uh, deer Trail, that dog yeah, track that was park. A, yeah, that was a good jag. I was driving an hour and a half a fucking way, one way each day, 12 hours a day, doing really good on transmission, but like, oh, there's got to be more to life, right? And I just like, you know what? Fuck it. Made the jump and did pretty good pretty quick. So it was, it was fun, but like, dude, nobody, as much as you guys all sit here and say, oh, yeah, I, I, I can see it happening. Like, I don't think anybody realized I could actually do it. I didn't know I could do it. You know, I had nobody. And I mean, you guys aren't, nobody was, don't take this the wrong way, but like nobody really knew what it was going to take or how much support. I mean, my own wife didn't support me in time. I was like, why are you doing this to us? And I was like, Jesus Christ. But it worked. Now that it's working, it's a little different, you know. But well, we've, yeah. in reality, you didn't have anything to lose because you had your fallback career. Mm -hmm. yep. So yeah, you would have, <clears throat> even if you would have come back six months, a year later, whatever, at least you fucking tried. Yeah. Nobody could say shit. Yeah. Right. You right. know, 100%. I mean, a lot of people don't <laughs> see it that way, you know. They don't see like, oh, well, you know. And you're right back where you were, which you were comfortable before. Right. What's the risk of not doing it? Right. That's, that's what I look right. at. It's, what's the risk of not doing it? What if it works? It's not, it's not what if it doesn't work? Oh, well, we already know what happens there. I'm right back where I was at. Right. We yeah, already know that. We already know that. Already, that's outcome. your bottom. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. We already know the outcome. It's like, what if it does work? Fuck. And here, you know, here we are. So, I don't know. Steve, let's, let's go into some stories about <laughs> us working together and, um, what's your favorite story? Yeah, you actually wrote a list down. And she also got me a really cool book. Here's a nice little book I have for the, for the bathroom here at the office. It's got some pretty cool images you should not masturbate to. And uh, they're actually right. Everything in here is accurate. You shouldn't ma masturbate to a pencil sharpener. You know, pretty cool book. So we're going to get into some other gifts he's got me. They're not, it's not the only gag gift he's got me. But as far as stories working together, what's one of your favorite stories that you kind of jump out at? I think... I think being on Storm, um, I think it was our last storm in Florida. Oh, the Jet. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> the most back-to-back -back, uh, 
Just a couple of dingers just knocked out of the park there. We got the generator story. We got the Spanishy, and we got the the blowjob story. Yeah, <laughs> we got all three of them. Yeah. Um, so let's hear your version. <clears throat> We're tell all three, by the way. I want to hear your. And I've told you the story. Yes. I remember. So real quick, I'm, I'm all over the place here, but I'll have something come up in my fucking head. And I don't want to forget it. I'll call Josh. Josh. Or text. I've got to tell you something right now. I never want to forget this story. <laughs> and I'll tell him the story because I'll forget. I have random thoughts throughout my fucking head all the time. And that story about the blowjob almost. He rap, evaporated from my brain. Like, it popped in my brain one day. I'm like, I think Dude. you text me. I, 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 said, I said, Josh, cool story, blowjob. Don't let me forget. Call me later. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. I'm like, cool. I got to tell you the story because I'm going to forget it. Because it, it had been like three or four years since I even, like, since it happened and since I even told the story. I'm like, that, that story almost fucking evaporated forever. I can't let that fucking die with me. So we'll get to that. But so, and I'm going to tell that story. Don't, don't, don't go anywhere. But the generator story, I think, is best <clears throat> told from your point of view because to me, I, it was weird for me, but I want to hear your, your version of that. Um, yeah, well, that's sort of, first of all, on the way down, <clears throat> I also remember, because we stopped at Disney. They put us up in Disney until the hurricane passed. Yes. And I, I thought this was funny as hell at the time because you backed, you backed in, into, like, uh, this little landing area where we were not in the, in the rain. Okay. As the, the hurricane passed. And you left two huge ruts in Disney's. Nicely manicured grass, <laughs> just forgot, like it was forgot, nothing. Forgot about that part. <laughs> yeah. For, so I, I, I always remember that. Just thinking, I was chuck, I always chuckle about that. I so always that, had a mentality. It's like it's my crew first, and fuck everybody else, right? And then, yeah. And Disney's everybody else, so fuck them. Yeah. yeah. And we we ate well that day. And we, we ate well. We <laughs> had a barbecue under the awning. I remember that. Exactly. Okay, go on. Um, so it was a good time. And then yeah, going down south, and we finally get to work in uh, North Miami area. There, uh, very affluent neighborhood mm. that we ended up in. Um, mm. And the, uh, the guy that we ended up meeting up with was, I believe, the brother of this homeowner. He had okay. a bunch of property. Yeah. Um, and to paint the picture, these are like multi, multi-million dollar compounds. Not houses, not, not acres, but like drug lord compounds, one after the other. And actually, it wasn't there. It was over in the Naples area. Because we finished up Fort Lauderdale, just got over the Naples side, I thought. And it was <clears> just like <throat> insane amounts of wealth. And we get there, and this guy comes out in a golf cart. And that's go ahead. Well, no, it was on the it was on the east side because oh, was it for the generator part? <clears throat> okay, okay, same same guy. Who, okay, uh, all right, all right. <clears throat> same guy who was taking us out on his golf cart mm-hmm. to to run down the single phase line, and uh, <laughs> and you're sitting next to him, and in front I'm sitting in the back, and he asked how how things were like if we were working down by Miami. Okay, that's how I remember it was. Over okay, on that side. okay, and um, you just kind of talking back and forth and he asked you how you know how's the area been down there and you're like well i guess it's been all right yeah and uh he's like oh it's a little spanishy down there <laughs> <laughs> and i look back <laughs> or i guess i look forward and i look back at steve like did you hear that <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of just i guess wanted clarification like yeah and he guy doubled down and just like it's not saying he yelled it in your ear but he's just like Spanishy. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, I, like he didn't. Like, I didn't hear him. He goes, oh, Spanishy. I'm like, oh, okay. I look back right. at his. Like, we just fucking hear that. <laughs> He's trying to use the word Spanishy as a polite term of a lot of Mexicans down there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And Jake was with us too. Yes. Yeah. yeah Jake. We all three of us look. We the apprentice stayed with the truck, and Jake had just topped out on storm. And so three journeymen were all looking at you like, we just fucking hear what he just fucking yeah. said. <laughs> and then. uh this leads to the generator story, by the way. Exactly. And then, so, so, we, so and to, to, to preface this, I'll to this day use Spanishy in that same context. So if I want to describe a neighborhood or an area and try to be polite about it, I'll just jokingly say, oh, it's a little Spanishy over there. And people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, ah, it's, it's an old story. You know? It's a common expression. Yeah, common, yeah. In some it's areas. Spanishy. Uh, so then we, I forget what we, if, if it was just a blown fuse or something. We, we had to do whatever we had to do, nothing crazy. Um. We go. We we get a ride back from that guy, and that guy, his his brother, who I think was the, the owner of all the property. Yeah, the that drug guy's lord. wife comes. The actual drug that guy's lord. wife comes strolling up, smoking hot. Yeah, absolutely smoking hot. Yeah, and uh, yeah, money does that. By the way, you guys knew that money does that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, crazy. it's weird. <laughs> some some reason we just figured we'd stick around. Um, Maybe we could get catch another glimpse of her. I don't know what it was. 
<laughs> but we were going to double check. We are going to double check the, the generator <clears throat> situation. That's right. Okay. That's right. Uh, I didn't know anything about generators. Big generators, mind you. Massive. Old school. Like, it looked like the fucking Titanic. Yeah. Old <laughs> jumper cables everywhere. Rusty panels falling off. Like, thing fucking has been Spanish-y. around for a fucking... spanish as fuck. Right. Yeah, yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Go on. And uh, we're checking the control panel, being like, oh, that... One thing led to another. <clears throat> Tried to get it going. Um, started for a couple of seconds. Smoke starts billowing out of this thing. Well, hang on. The, the, the generator was already running. What I was trying to do is get it to turn off by turning the power on. Well, when I turned the power on, it cross-faced the generator power. And then the generator dies. And then That's the power's what, not coming on either. Power's <laughs> not. So whatever happened with the upfeed versus the... I'm like, fuck, I gotta give you guys something. So finally we figured out there was some, it was, uh, I can't remember. It's been so fucking long, but figured out to give them power. The generator's off and there's zero chance it ever fires up again. And they <laughs> yeah. won't figure that out hopefully until the next storm, but uh, <laughs> they had power because what it was is it was still running and the power wasn't going to their house and I wanted to give them power to their house. So you didn't have to keep it, you know, yeah, otherwise they would never would have known, right. right? Exactly. I was, trying to, I was trying to do the right thing, but I fucking smoked this thing. It was fucking smoke. It looked like a fucking dust cloud. It was fucking so much fucking smoke. Like burning diesel fuel. Like someone was burning tires. So much fucking smoke. Dude. It was so much smoke. And it was that noise was just baked in my brain forever. So then years go by or months go by. And I remember, I remember texting you about something. Hey, man, remember that generator? You're like, nope, don't remember that at all. <laughs> nope, wasn't me. Wrong guy. <laughs> yep. Wrong fucking deal. So Ho- hoping the company name on the truck and like our faces weren't like on, yeah. this, on and, the I mean, security Like I said, going back to house. that, like it was honest to God, good intentions, trying to help those guys out. But like. I mean, they had it fucking jerry rigged so bad. It was likely their fault. My fault for doing it, but like, it was so fucked up. But I tried doing the right thing. But let's go to that blowjob story. So I remember telling you, like, hey, dude, I've got a fucking story for you. I cannot have it die with me. So what do you remember of it? So we can. I remember you, I don't know what time of day it was, <clears throat> random hours, I'm sure. Early, um, probably early. I, f- I feel like it might have been earlier. It was either real early or real late, and it was just that. It was a text message saying, hey, I got a story for you. Blowjob story. Call me later when you get freed up. <laughs> so I finished my day, and I was like, all right, it's time, boys. I got to hear this motherfucker. <laughs> I got to fucking hear it. So here we go. Let's let's hear it. I call you up, and yeah. uh, then you proceed to tell me about uh, some other fucking storm down in, I think it was Florida. No, this Louisiana. is the same storm. This is the same fucking storm. Oh, okay. Yeah, Hurricane Irma <laughs> 2017. You got hunt or something. That storm was a for wild sure. motherfucker. So... I'll, I'll tell it to my version. I want to hear what you remember and then what you remember because you were there kind of. So on this storm in Florida, when we get down there, and if you ever build power lines, you ever go on storm, there's always downtime. It's either 100 or zero on storm. You're either busting your balls or you're at zero because you're waiting for the next ticket, waiting for the next marching orders. You're either you're fucking off doing zero and you're bored out of your mind or you're working your dick off. You know, There's no in between. So knowing this, because I've been – doing it for 10, 15 years at that time. I, I, know the, I know the schedule. I know what's going on. And, you know, I was like, hey, we're going to have some downtime. And on my downtime, I want to go alligator, hunt, alligator hunting. I know where these fuckers are at. I know we're in Florida. Let's go alligator, alligator hunting. So, cool. So we had some downtime. We're at a Bass Pro parking lot. We go into Bass Pro. And, and as far as staging goes, we always stage in a big mall parking lot, typically. Enough room for all the trucks to park. Enough room to put up tents and fuel trucks and all this other happy shit. So, we're at Bass Pro Shop. So I'm like, fuck it, let's go kill some time. We go around Bass Pro, and um, we're in there, and I'm like, just, I know what I want. So I talk to the guy behind the counter. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely resourceful, by the way. So I know that any hillbilly around that has a hunting service is in with these guys <laughs> at Bass Pro. So I'm like, cool. Guy, what do you got for alligator hunting around here? He goes, I got a guy. I'm like, I, I assumed you did. <laughs> so he wow. gives me his business card. Like, it was like fucking Billy Bob's. It was a, the most bogus business card you ever met. Like, oh, fuck, all right. So I call a dude up. Hey, man, I don't have time right now, but I may have some time on the storm. I'm like, what do you got going on? He goes, well, you know, the storm displaced a bunch, but I got a lot of hogs. I got a lot of alligators. You know, you can come down and shoot whatever you want. I said, cool, dude. I said, I'm going to call you when I get some time. And it may be last minute, but I'll call you. All right, cool. So, <clears throat> and it's funny, I call this the blowjob story, and the blowjob part's at the very fucking end, but it's more of a hog. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt, but we got to talk about one of our sponsors. I want to give a shout out to a company that's been helping me out, Momentum Commercial Capital. They offer help with business funding from working capital, 
equipment financing, SBA loans, and investment real estate financing, with options from single-family rentals up to large commercial properties. They also work with syndications to source funding. So if you're in a business or in real estate investing or even just looking to get into them, uh, check out Momentum Commercial Capital. Ask for Greg Funk and tell him I referred to you. Once again, guys, if you are in need of any of these services, be sure to check them out at momentum-commercial-capital.com today. Hunting story, and not like what Matt does in Wisconsin with fat chicks. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a... It's So we so <clears throat> the storm is wrapping up, and we're about to go home for the whole trip. We're in the Naples side, I think, at this time. And um, I call this, hey, dude, storm's winding down. I've got some free time. What do you got available? He goes, dude... He goes, meet me at this gas station. We'll drive in together. He goes, gators are kind of hard to come by, but I got plenty of hogs for you. Ah, fuck it, cool. So I go down this fucking, this dirt road, which seemingly was forever. And there's these pieces of plywood and these signs everywhere. It says, you loot, we shoot, right? This hillbilly as fuck, Florida as fuck. And I finally get to this guy's compound. He's got high fences everywhere. He's got pet deer. He's got like a nice house around, surrounded by a swamp of like shit, right? He goes, oh, come on in. So he goes to this little shack, and this little shack is like, you know, his headquarters. And it's got, you know, um, the waiver I'm supposed to sign is like on a stack of papers this fucking tall. He's looking around, grabs a random piece of paper. It's not that. Grab, oh, here's a waiver. Fucking dust it off. Here, sign this. I'm like, all right, cool. So he signed the waiver <clears throat> for going hunting. <clears throat> he goes, can you shoot? I'm like, yeah. He goes, let's see. Hands me a suppressed rifle. And he <laughs> goes to his dump. Hands me the rifle, by the way. It's loaded. It turns his back to me, which doesn't know me, right? Like, as, as a military veteran, you guys know that's just like first day shit. You don't just, whatever. There's, there's gun safety rules he violated from the fucking jump. <laughs> so, hands me his rifle. I'm in this golf cart. He goes, let me be right back. He goes to a fucking dumpster, jumps over the dumpster, pulls out a pizza box, looks at it, goes back in his office, grabs a Sharpie, draws a bullseye on this pizza box, leans it up against a tree stump, jumps in the golf cart, spins me around, drives off. He goes, ah, that's about 80 yards right here. Go ahead and shoot that bullseye. All right, cool. You know, there's, there's a scope on it. There's a suppressor. So I, you know, shoot it. Bam, hit it. Perfect. Perfect bullseye. I mean, 80 yards with a scope is nothing, right? So he goes, all right, cool. Good enough for me. So I'm like, all right, cool. So now we're driving through this guy's swamp with a loaded rifle. And I'm lefty, so it's pointing out this way, you know, just by chance, right? But he's like, yeah, make sure you're ready. I'm like, oh, fuck, all right, dude. <laughs> Every law in, like, gun safety thing you've ever been taught is violated, right? So I'm like, all right, whatever. Brings me out to this pond. It's a really nice, beautiful pond, probably a three-acre pond, and nice, beautiful deck. And, and you, you post up on the deck. Gives you a nice little, um, little you know, sniper's roost, basically, a nice little spot to shoot, sandbags. And you know, over the pond is this feeding area where all the hogs are going to be. Well, we're there. And, uh, granted, if you've ever been hunting, it's an all-day thing. You can't rush hunting. You're, you're not shooting. You're hunting, right? We have limited. We have probably two hours of daylight, tops, right? I ask him, is this going to be a problem? He goes, no, plenty of time. Don't worry. I'm like, okay, Billy Bob, you know, we'll be fine. So he's got an assistant who's, who's fucking all scarred up. He's got scars everywhere. I'm like, dude, what the fuck happened to you? He goes, yeah, wild boar got to me. So he got all these wild boar scars on his face, like, doesn't speak English, you know, like fucking legit assistant, right, down in Florida. So anyhow, we're on this shooting area. There's nothing there. And he's getting kind of closer to darkness. We're about to lose our shooting light. He's like... Hang on. He radios to Julio or whatever his name was. And he's like, hey, go to our other feeding area. Put some feed in there. We'll be over there in five minutes. So the guy does that. But when he does that, he actually pushes the whole herd of, of uh, hogs right to us. Hmm. All of a sudden, there's, there's 30 hogs right there. I'm like, fucking fish in a barrel. Here we go. <laughs> he goes, all right, pick one out. And, and for this guy, it was like the size was the, the cost. I'm like, I don't give a shit about the big ass. I don't want a big trophy hog. I just want to shoot a fucking hog, say I did it, and be done with it, right? I pick out this one hog that happened to have like white and black striping, so it was easy to pick out in the group, you know. I told him which one I wanted, and he goes, All right, cool, that's you know, 300 bucks or whatever it was. So I shoot it, fucking bullseye, hard shot, flipped over, and died in four seconds, right? As, as best as you can imagine it, it, it should have been, right? Cool, we're done. Get this hog, cleans it, take a photo with it. Um, we end up going and like cleaning it up, putting a click. I want to eat the meat because I'm a very I enjoy eating what I what I hunt, and you know, even though it was a wild boar, and I was like, you know, kind of regretted it afterwards. I didn't have some of the meat, and it wasn't that good. Yeah. But um, I, I remember taking the fucking meat all the way home with me in a cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Shit was, we we processed it, and some of it was still good, but not most of it. Anyhow, 
we get all done. He goes, all right, dude, here's your cooler of meat, but you've got to get it on ice. Cool. You got to get it on ice right away. Like, you know, it's cool, but like from here, you leave right here and you go to a gas station and get some ice before you go home. Cool. I said, if I got ice on this thing tonight, it'll last me until I get home. He goes, yeah. He goes, every time you get fuel, stop and leave the drain open. But every time you stop and get fuel, get some more ice put on top. It'll drain through it. You know, it'll, it'll flush it out. Cool. So I go straight from this compound, straight to a random gas station on the way back to where the guys were, you know, sleeping for the night. I pull in there. And as I pull my work truck in the gas station, <clears throat> there's this weird looking guy kind of staring at me. As I'm, at first, I needed fuel. I needed fuel. Then I was going to get some ice. I was going to get some food. So I pull in, get fuel for the pickup. And as I'm getting fuel for the pickup, there's a guy pulls up next to me, kind of eyeballing me, kind of giving me the side eye. And I'm like, it's a little weird, you know, like, whatever. Um, he's a little Honda fucking Accord, a little silver car. I'm not too worried about it, but I recognize that someone's staring at me. You know, I'm pretty aware. So then, well, cool, whatever. Maybe just maybe fucking had a booger hanging out of my nose. Whatever. Who knows why he's staring at me, but he's not a threat. So I get fuel. I drive around, park, and I back into the um, parking spot at the gas station in the entrance to get some ice and get some, get some Subway. So now I go inside. I grab the bag of ice, grab my Subway sandwich, which is ordering a Subway sandwich is a five or 10-minute process, right? I get outside, got a bag of ice, got my Subway, and uh, this guy's parked next to me now, and I'm backed in. He's driven in, so driver's door to driver's door. Now he's staring at me again. I'm like, what the fuck does this guy want, you know? And I can't believe I'm like, okay, whatever. So I put the ice in the cooler, you know, rinse out some of the blood, close the tailgate, get in my driver's door, and I'm ready to just pull away and, like, ignore the guy, but he's still staring at me. And I'm like, what the fuck? So now I'm in a spot where I'm pretty safe. I'm not really worried about him. No matter what it is, I'm, I'm in drive foot's on the brake, and I'm like, I got to know. So I roll the window down. I'm like, dude, is there something wrong, man? What's going on? He goes, yeah, aren't you the lineman? And I'm like, yeah, I'm a lineman. How'd you, how'd you guess? He goes, well, yeah, I'm so-and-so. I'm here to meet you. And I'm like, I don't know anybody that name. He's like, yeah, we're supposed, you're, you're in a lineman. supposed to meet I'm like, no, nah, man, not me. Wrong guy. He goes, God damn it. I drove all the way over here. Fucking drove an hour to be here. <laughs> and I'm just like, Dude, I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, you're, is someone fucking with me? He goes, no, nah, never mind. Roll my window up and get ready to leave. And I'm like, no, nah, I got to know. What does this guy want to do? Why did this guy drive an hour to meet a lineman at a gas station? So I roll my window back down. I look at him. I'm like, what were we supposed to, what, why were you supposed to meet me here? He goes, well, you know, I was going to give you a blowjob. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? I said, no, dude, we got the wrong guy. We got the wrong guy. Window up and fucking bailed. But somewhere out there, somebody arranged for a dude to get a blowjob at a random gas station, <laughs> and the guy was there for, fucking for me. I could not fucking believe it. I was like, Twilight Zone shit, man. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I, I do remember you getting back, and I was flustered. telling me. I was like, you gotta, that story you're right going to fucking believe this, dude. <laughs> Wild shit, yeah, yeah. So that was the, the long-winded story, but I think it kind of paints the right picture. <laughs> I think that's what I remember most about that story is you, that was like 15 minutes. Yeah. It was like a 15-minute story of... Going all over hell. <laughs> and then at the end, like, oh, okay, well, I didn't think we, I thought we completely lost track of the, the subject. Yeah. Like, all right, well, he's going to go on some other fucking story rant. And yeah. We'll get back to it or a fuck. We'll you think I'll that, get another random text. You would think that going on storm and shooting a hog is a story all in itself. That's yeah. a fucking wild story all by itself. That's what I intended it for to be. Then I get back to the gas station and some dude's trying to blow me. It's like, God <laughs> damn. <laughs> <laughs> fucking wild, dude. But it happened. Yeah, yeah. That's Florida. That's fucking Florida as fuck, man. Mm. Yeah. Let's tell the story about the time we met on Storm with that, that retard that didn't want to put chains on his truck. Remember that? Oh, my God. Remember that story? <clears throat> yeah, I remember. <laughs> some some bro from... Uh, One of Matt's buddies, our buddy uh, Matt Baller. Yeah. Yeah. yeah who was a I last minute remember. Storm deal. Matt and I were... Camped out in a his RV, waiting to go sign the books. We got a he got a storm call, mm -hmm. and uh, he's like, "You want to go?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Call somebody." He's like, "I got a guy, being you." Yep. I call the guy. I don't even remember his name, <clears throat> but uh, it was your buddy. The, the, well, other guy, the, other, the fourth guy was your buddy. Well, he was a guy that had just quit from the same job that okay. Matt and I had okay. just drug right, up. Fair on. enough. Okay. So. So Matt calls me, you call him. Yeah. Okay, there's four of us. So we could be a crew. Yep, yep. And uh, I was like, I, I know. about that part. I remember giving you shit about that now. Okay. I was like, okay. I was like, hey, he's not, a, he's not a hand, but I was like. He's a body. He's a body. <laughs> I was like. He's a nice and, guy. 
<laughs> and I was like, he'll basically be our apprentice. I was like, I work. He worked around him. Yeah, for the last. I remember that months. now. Yeah, I was like, he'll basically be our apprentice. I was like, but he's a JL. And uh, yeah, sure shit. So we haul ass to New Jersey, end up in the trucks, drive south. Didn't your truck break down? I'm sure it did. On I the can't first, remember. on the on the way down or something. Yeah. Stuck in some gas station trying to fix it. Then <clears throat> go to the hotel, bed down for the night. Then they ship us out somewhere else the next morning. And it's an ice storm in like Ashland, North Carolina. Yeah. So they got ice and then they got snow. So, I mean, it's just a shit, shit show. They got Perfect one, chance for, for tire chains. Perfect opportunity for it. Yeah. yeah. And they got one plow truck for the whole county, yeah. you know. So I load up chains in the morning, fucking take off. And he's like, no, nah. he's like, I'm from Ohio. He's like, I can drive in this shit. <laughs> Head down the highway. <laughs> First exit ramp, <clears throat> fucking spins out. He's sideways in the fucking on ramp. Two blocked everything. Dude, We're the, trying, whole, the, whole, the whole exit is fucking fucked up. Just off. fucked to tears. <laughs> and then we spent probably an hour and a half, two hours trying to unfucker him. I mean, drag him out. I ended up blowing a chain off, trying to pull him. Yep. We get him out, and I was like, give me that fucking chain off your truck. He's like, oh, he's like, well, you broke yours. I was like, I broke mine trying to help you, you dumb fuck. Yeah. I was like, give me that fucking chain. So he's limping around on one chain. I've got two chains now, and we took off. And I don't know, we were down there for, what, seven days, and I think we put up two services on, like. Did nothing. I ended up dragging up on that store, remember? Yeah. I ended up, I ended up getting a gig in California. I had, but like, which was weird about that was I ended up dragging 15 minutes before we had any actual work to do. Remember that? Mm -hmm. I never got so much hell before because we had sat around for five days, six days, whatever it was, did nothing. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm like, dude, I got an opportunity to go to California and make a you know, a big rip here. I'm, I'm bouncing. As I'm leaving, like, hey, we need to go put up some service. I'm like, sorry, dude, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking left. Did no work for five days. A little bit of work comes, I'm out of there. That was yeah. funny. That's perfect. Oh, yeah. We had a storm like that in Baltimore, remember? We had fucking 500 guys <laughs> in a yard. Big fuck in Baltimore, you know, Maryland, and big fucking yard, and we get the only ticket out of the whole yard. The only fucking yep. ticket. And <laughs> snowstorm, it was a service. Crazy crazy blizzard. I don't know yeah. how. Silly to even go out. Not worth risking the trucks. And we end up going out there and put up the only fucking service, come back, no one else had worked the whole time like <laughs> yeah. motherfuckers. Oh, literally the only ones. Yeah. Out of that yard. And on that store, remember, we had an apprentice who put in, uh, he put that fuel additive, the anti-gel fuel additive, into the death tank. <clears throat> and he didn't know he did it. He's fucking retarded. So we get out there. All of a sudden, his check engine light, he uses the orange one, and then there's the red one. <laughs> the red one comes on, and all of a sudden, we're like, oh, check engine. I'm like, what'd you do? Well, I don't know. I'm like, dude, this truck's been running fine. What did you do? And then, because that deaf shit takes a long time to you know trickle in. Mm -hmm. Made all the way from Chicago to Baltimore. And when we got there, it was fucked. Just, I was so mad. And then our apprentice, or, no, was it Carl? Was he an apprentice at the time? I thought, I thought we got the, the apprentices talked, or, <coughs> which was Nick. Yeah. Basically, I'm like, either you're too fucking stupid to know what you did, or you tried hiding it. Either way, I don't want you on my crew. No. Can't have that. Exactly. Don't call me stupid. I'm like, oh, she did it on purpose then. Why well, do it on purpose? So you're stupid. Well, I'm not stupid. I'm like, you're fucking dumb, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hate him. Anyhow, what else? What else do we want to talk about? We talk about our. Uh, when you first got out here. Oh, yeah, the hate finding. When, when you first got out here from Oh, Chicago, this is good. This is good. I had met Phil, your brother. My brother, yep. yep. <clears throat> had been working with Phil on the weekends, just filling in on the crew, stuff like that. Well, next thing you know, I see some new dude. Hey, what's up, man? Next thing you know, oh, you're Phil's brother. All right. Well, I talked to Phil a little bit. Phil's, Phil's not super, you know. Outgoing, talkative. Uh, yeah, outgoing yeah, or yeah. like, you know, um, Want to offend anybody or anything like that? Sure. So he he's kept keep, to himself. Yeah, he right? kept to himself. Yep. Yep. So, not a bad place to be. No, but better than I do sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Because I led with, "Hey, man, you know Brian Lappy?" He's like, and you were like, "Yeah, I know him. I fucking hate that motherfucker." <laughs> and I was like, "Fuck yeah!" And I, I was like, "I hate that motherfucker too." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't give him a chance to like, and as I'm saying it out loud, I'm like, "Fuck, what if it's his brother?" What if it's yeah, just like, dad, it didn't I, don't matter. I didn't care. Did I hate matter. that motherfucker. <laughs> Brian, if you're watching, you're a bag of shit, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate you. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> you know it. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah. That was fucking right. I'm like, I'm like, oh, we just hate bonded. This is perfect. <laughs> yeah, man. That was, I don't and know then, if it was the first day or what. It was, it was the first day. Yeah, like first we're 10 minutes the, in the yard. We're leaning over the pickup truck at the end, having a, either water or beer or whatever. But 
end of the day, oh, you know Brian Lappy? Yeah, I hate that motherfucker. And you're like, oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm like, that was awesome. <laughs> Instant hate Brian Lappy. Like, cool, we got something in common. Yep. The next thing I remember about you the first time I met you, second time I met you, whatever, is we're, we're building the 765 line. And in Colorado, they oversize their wire a lot because of the heat and the cold and the, the up and down 30 degree water, you know, 30 degree temperature change. And um, which I think is pretty much probably the high end of the country. A lot of the country has a, a fluctuation, but I think Colorado has probably one of the most severe temperature fluctuations. Yeah, shit, it was what, 30 some it's, degrees the other day? 30 or 40 degrees every single day. So the wire itself, the bigger it is, the more it can handle that. So they have a lot of their main lines built out of 765. So he's put amp packs together. So I got to stop you here. This is all allegedly. <laughs> None of this can be proven and or is factual. So. Yeah. I saw a guy who looked like Josh. Okay? <laughs> the guy who looked like Josh. <laughs> good point. Yeah. Um, we have what's called amp packs who, who puts the wires together. It's, it's, a connector, it's a connector that holds the wire together. And use what's called an amp pack gun to, to use a, a basically a 22 shell that fires it and it, and it goes in there, right? It's a preset amount. It goes in there. And I'm like, hey, man, I need, I need some 22 shells. I need some yellow shells or whatever it was. And, you know, he goes, I'm out of that. He goes, I don't even use them. I just use a hammer. And I'm like, what? You fucking hillbilly. What kind of fucking Detroit <laughs> shit is that, you know? He goes, I just, he goes, you hammer it in there. You tell me if that gun's going to shoot any further than that. I'm like, okay. So we get up there, and I fucking start hammering them together. And I'm like, holy fuck, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, here I am talking shit, but I'm like, it worked. And... In Colorado, they were using the Ampact brand instead of Burndy. So the Ampact brand's a pain in the ass oh, yeah. versus the Burndy gun. So I'm like, well, fuck it. You know, Ampact, you know, Quarter you can, turn versus fucking 25 turns. Exactly. Yeah. And to take it apart, the whole reload, the whole process, right? The hammer works pretty quick. It does drive it further. It's a better connection. It's and hard not to argue. only that, it hard never misfires. <laughs> yeah. It might miss, but it never misfires. It's hard to argue against it. But I remember the first thing I thought, like, this fucking hillbilly. Like, what am I? Where fuck is this, this guy? Is, and I've already had some other Colorado things happen to me. Like, here's another fucking Colorado retard trying to tell me how to build power lines. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm like, fuck this guy. And no, it was, it was legit. It was funny as fuck, though. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. I, uh, I, another guy. Yeah, the guy who looks tried, like Josh, by the way. Tried to, yeah. you yeah. know, spread that knowledge as much as he can to the guys that he cared for yeah yeah because <laughs> fuck them man packs and that stupid shit yeah and i wouldn't do that for any other smaller than that because it works for the big ones for some reason yeah. uh the small ones i still <laughs> use a gun but the big ones it worked flawlessly and uh that hammer still owned <laughs> the summer you <laughs> this yep, was that hammer notch still on owned. the end of it though on the end of the wedge yeah i know but it, you, don't, you don't need to yeah you know, there's enough corrosion and shit that it happens. Yep. You're fine. <laughs> yep. It seizes up. Don't worry. The next guy that takes it down sees the hammer marks on. He's like, oh, yeah. Josh was here. Josh was here. <laughs> yeah. Allegedly. But even that notch mark, by Josh. the notch mark I was looking at wouldn't put enough on there to not back it out. Yeah. Because yeah. you drive it in farther than the gun would be. I remember that though. I was like, hey, this fucking retard. What are you? No way, dude. We built a what? lot of fucking 795 jumpers. Mm hmm. A lot, more a, that, a lot of that shit here. So yeah. what was you guys, because all of us have been from somewhere else and moved here. What are some, what are the first things that jump? I'll go with you first because you came here first. Then me, you guys kind of came at the same time. So you had nobody like me to tell you about what you're going to bit. Like, you first got here, like, what the fuck, right? Like, what are some things you learned when you first got here? When I first got here, I took a straight 40-hour call. Okay. Got here, had a bunch of shit to do, you know, moved halfway across the country, the whole yep. shooting match, right? Well, I just took a forty-hour call. Figured, hell, I'll find, I'll find Fridays, I'll find Saturdays, and yep. if not, guess what? We're halfway from where I was to California. Yep, I'm halfway. Yep. Now I just took twenty hours off my fucking drive. Yep, it's only an eighteen-hour drive to South Hall. If I don't fucking like it here, I'll go get moneyed up down there, work mm -hmm. six months a year, and come back here and fucking hang out. Okay. So got here, got with uh with that with that crew had a a, a two linemen. Me, another lineman, and the foreman. And uh, I don't know if we had a hot and a cold, but we had a, another. Big crew, yeah. Yeah, big crew. Well, that lineman had refused to take the test for like a year and a half. Which test? His jail test. Jesus Christ. And the apprenticeship out here and everybody else allowed it. Had mm -hmm. all his hours, had everything good to go. Ready to rock. A year and a half ago. Just kept putting it off, wasn't ready. That's what he said. And I was like, one, who, who wants to do that? Yeah. Who wants to put themselves through another year or two or six months or oh, seven being days an right. of being another an apprentice? Week. Yeah, no, nobody wants yeah, to do that. Yeah, nobody do the rest of the fucking day. Right. I mean, so I was like, man, this is this is fucking weird. Like, how? I never heard of no shit like this. Like, if you're not ready, why didn't they fucking shit can you? Like, right. 
So thought that was a little weird. You know, it's like, all right, well, and that, guy, that guy went away. Does not happen at all that. No, no. no. A dis- you went through all that too, right? No. Where'd you go through? Missouri Valley. Oh, Mo Valley. Okay. I forgot. Yeah, that's a border there. <clears throat> so, yeah, next thing you know, he's gone. He moved to another crew. I was like, right, well, whatever. So we're, you know, just back to normal life. And then just, you know, filling in on Fridays and things like that. And then, you know, listening to dispatch and other things, you know, <clears throat> it's just super, it's a lot different than like. Very lax. Super lax. Yeah. It's real, real mellow, which sometimes is really handy. It is. But what's up, guys? I'm sure you're enjoying the podcast. It's fucking awesome. I know. Okay. But let's talk about one of my sponsors, Alpine Moving Company. So we all know that moving sucks. Okay. Stop asking your buddies to fucking move you. It's always a problem. We know that. Be an adult. So use Alpine Moving Company. They know how to get the shit done. They offer residential and commercial moving. Also, they will move you anywhere within North America, anywhere in the lower 48, Canada, Mexico. And they're going to hook you up with 10% off. So discount code MOVE24. Make the right move. Sometimes it is uh, scary. It's it's a touch scary, yeah. Yeah. Like when things change, I kind of need you know things to be serious when you call when you call people. Yeah, right. dispatch it, or the GF or anybody. Yeah, 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 and it's always like super mellow. Which, like I said, it, it's handy sometimes, but uh, other times I I actually do need answers. And yeah, things, you know. Yeah, if you, I think if you're a foreman here in Colorado, and you operate best with no GF help, you'll do really well. If you're a foreman that always needs a Call a GF and and, yeah. and beat up his ass. You're you're fucked. Yeah, if you got GFs questions. here, don't do anything that I've seen. At least maybe not. At our, you know the form. I mean, you guys have all been around. Either the foreman, you guys have either been linemen or foreman out here. Foreman. I mean, you've yeah. you've seen how much a lineman does. Yeah. As far as I mean, at least at least with the company that we are, I mean, the, mm-hmm. the foreman does a GF job. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. The I G- mean, and then and then some, and we all know it, and they know it. Yeah. But they I mean, don't. I don't bitch. The they do the GF job, and then what would be like. In a normal world, like the GFs, like office person, yeah, yeah. like the you know, front desk paperwork, check, let's yeah. call it, yeah. Which is a weird thing because it doesn't happen anywhere else in the country. Yeah, it's, it's only here. It was a weird. It, it's not something I was expecting or used to, mm-hmm. you know. But I'm adapt and overcome. It's like, all right, well, now that I know what I'm in for. Right, yeah. I Overall, guess, I'd say right. the 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 pluses out my outweigh the minuses, but it's a, it's a shock of like. Oh, that's how we're, we're playing prison rules. Okay, once I know the rules, we'll play that. But you know, but like when you first yeah. get here, you're thinking, you know, a comed Illinois, like it's fucking strict. It's militant. It's, you know, you don't. Yeah, every little thing is by the book. And you get out here, it's like it's the wild west. Okay, cool. Well, it's, now that I know the rules, I'll play that way too. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So what was it's, your? I, I kind of preface both of you guys of like, hey, when you guys get here, it's gonna be a little bit different. Um, what was your initial um, shock or you know realization? Hey, this is different. Uh, well, like you, you guys just said, <clears throat> and I've asked this working with your brother Phil. Like, what? Are, so, what does a GF do? Yeah, um, yeah, several times. Yeah, I had to just try to figure that out, work it through my head. Um, I think the company you work at probably has the best GFs compared to the other companies. You know, maybe. Yeah. Um, so it's even weird that you're saying that because I know. Anyhow, go on. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, so there's that, and then on top of that. Uh, and I was told by you and by your brother, the Colorado Curve. The Colorado Curve. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> and you, you can be, you can be told about it, <laughs> but you got to really experience it. <laughs> it's, it's something else. Let's hear your version of what the Colorado Curve is. What do you What do you explain that to be? Someone who has no clue about building power lines or anything about Colorado. And it's not just it's not just building. Power no, lines. exactly. That's how I was thinking. That's how I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Not at all. Um, Everybody's just working at like half pace for starters. Yeah. No matter what, it seems like. Yeah. Uh, and not like, I'm not saying anybody has to rush and be unsafe about anything, but there's just no. So a sense of urgency. Yeah. In any trade, in any facet of anything here. <clears throat> it's not just building power lines. But it, it, it definitely comes out in your career where you're working because where we came from, it was very competitive. It was very get your shit done. It was very uh, sense of urgency, it feels like. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I there was a, job I was we were helping with some crane sets backyard stuff we were actually able to set our pole with a backyard machine it was a transformer pole with a jib no just kidding allegedly Um, (laughs) (laughs) I may or may not have done that before I figured out real quick just like all right there's a lot of transformers that are paralleled and so I just put everything back the same way it was you know like Mm -hmm. and when it was all said and done whosever job was came down they're like hey did you guys make up your can same way? I was like, yeah. 
They're like, oh, we, we didn't double check that. Or <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ours is right. <laughs> and theirs was a climber. And I was just like, ours is right. It was just like, yeah. kind of blew my mind being like people who've been working here for I don't know how long. <laughs> then also, uh, <laughs> That's awesome. me and Phil like walked back to that pool and the cardboard, or the, I'm sorry, the plywood for the backyard machine. None of it was drilled with any P line or mule tape to drag it around with. Really? And like we walked back there and like I was just like, I'm like, like just did like threw my hands down like as in like, are, what the fuck? Yeah. Is this? And it's Phil. First, and, it's first day shit. Yeah. Yeah. And Phil just was just like, yeah. He's like, exactly. And he started like yelling at the apprentice right away. He's just like, he fucking gets it. I was just like, <laughs> didn't have to say a word. Yeah. Just had to do one of these, like point down, like, as in like, how the fuck? Have you not figured this is out this yet? Yeah. So hard how has your out? back not been so sore that you haven't figured out an easier way to move plywood around? You yeah. Put a fucking rope on it for fuck's sake. Yeah. Yeah. I, <clears throat> the, the smallest of things that as, a, as an example is uh, it's really weird. Kind of it's mind like, boggling. Yeah. I'll say. Yeah. Um, what about you? Well, have you Matt, you, you dealt with some of that shit yet? Um, that kind of warned you too, right? I mean, kind of yeah. said, the, hey, yeah, man. I got the warning. Yeah. I mean, coming in, it. The biggest shock was just like the lack of work that a GF does pretty much anywhere else yeah. in the country. Yeah. I mean, basically the way my GF laid it out, he's like, he's like, and he told me, he's like, straight up, he's like, we don't do GF work like you've seen anywhere else in the country. He's like, we're kind of doing superintendent stuff. So he's like, you're kind of on your own. He's we're like, we're golfing, we're fucking off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, but he's like, you can call me anytime. I'll help you out with whatever. And he has, and he does. And, yep. you know, Fortunately for my yard, I mean, even the the other foremen are they're dialed and they're super fucking helpful. Like, yeah. they knew when I was because I was taking over. I was coming from out of state, like yep. first day, fucking only time on the system. So they were like, "You need help with anything? Let us know. Like, just give us a call. We're in the neighborhood. We'll help you out. Like, paperwork, getting locates, you know, switching." Whatever and what he's it talking is. about, I just want to kind of preface some of that. What he's talking about is <clears throat> all of that shit. You can be a foreman your whole career, come to Colorado. All the shit you done as a foreman doesn't really matter anymore because now you're doing GF work. And then you're still doing foreman work. So, like, what he's talking about, he's like, hey, if you need help with some of this stuff, because you've probably never done it before. You never had to get your own locates, get your own fucking uh, switching plans put in place or, you know, planning for a crane outage, right? Like, these are things that the GF normally does for you and kind of, that's his job. Here, I still don't know what the fuck they do. But, yeah, yeah. so anyhow, you jump into that. Yeah, so I was basically just kind of thrown into it there. I mean, not thrown, I mean, I was thrown into it, but... I accepted the role. So yeah. it's like, but the only reason I, I accepted the role on one condition, the guy that we know mutually, mm -hmm. I was like, well, you have to stay on the crew. Yeah. I was like, cause I don't want to fucking deal with anybody else. Right. And I don't want to go work for anybody else. I was like the short amount of time that him and I had got to know each other, talking on the phone for a couple of days, mm -hmm. working together for, you know, a short amount of time. I was like, you have to stay on the crew. So yeah. I was like, you know, the system, you know, the circuit, you can do the work. You can take care of the apprentices, run them. I can concentrate on being a foreman and learning this yep. fucking shit here. Yeah, yeah. So. And what, why didn't he want, because it probably was offered to him first, right? Because I mean, he's been, been it was. longer. So what did, it what was, was his? his? He was, he, I was supposed to be working for him. Yeah. Um, what happened? He just decided he didn't want to do it. And he realized it, you know, the first day. He's like, you know what? He's like, I just want to be in my tools. Yep. He's like, the same for me. He's like, I don't want to deal with this shit. So now he's in the meat seat, you know, yeah. and which is fine because every time something goes to shit, he, just, I have gets, to deal he with, just gets out and gets the bucket truck. I was like, <laughs> I just look at him. I was like, fuck you. Yep. yep. Like, this should be your fucking issue. Yep. Yep. But That's no, funny. we get along good. I like yeah. him. He's a good hand. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, I think here in Colorado, it's probably the easiest place to work overall, but it's also... You know, sometimes being too easy can get, get get away from you too, and all of a sudden it gets too lax and whatever. But I enjoy it. I think people miss out on it. I think people are scared of lower scale, but then they we get pretty damn too sometimes, right? I think people are just like a little hidden honey hole. Well, for me, like I've been coming to Colorado for years on vacation, mm -hmm. like multiple times a year. Yeah. You know, majority of my time here is on the western slope. Mm -hmm. You know, on the back forty and stuff, doing my thing, but. Now I'm in my vacation spot. So like for me to come here, it's like I wasn't really applying for the job. I was applying for the location. Yeah. yeah. You know, so. Make the job work and that's where I want to be. Right. Yeah. So that's why I came. Yeah. That was the move for me. 
because we have Steve and I have a running joke where, you know, when I left him, because him and I were working together for years, <clears throat> and, and the story for us is that him and I went to All Bat together, <clears throat> which is All Bats. Where, you know, you basically get cut in, you go there, and if you pass a three week boot camp, you're you're an apprentice. If you don't pass, you're you're kicked out. And you went through All Bat too, right? So yeah, you go through it, and anybody in that class that you talk to afterwards is pretty unbreakable bond. It's a it's a weird training you go through. It's pretty tough. Um, probably the toughest, one of the tougher things you ever go through. Um, but him and I went through it together. And then there's some wild stories there too, by the way. <laughs> uh, and then, <laughs> fuck, I forgot about those I, stories. <laughs> forgot you could remember that. My first experience with Tony and I <laughs> kind of hated him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I did. I, oh, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, tell the story. Let's hear it. Um, <laughs> this is good. I forgot about this story. I mean, long story short, uh, it's like two days before we were like oh, yeah. done. The Wednesday before the Friday we graduate. And uh, he did a burnout in the parking lot between the two buildings. And I mean, they were all, it was all bullshit. They were like saying they're going to kick, like just kick the whole class out. Like yeah, everybody's pissed. done. They were pissed because we laughing. all should have, yeah. you know, policed each other up so yep. no one did anything stupid or whatnot. Yep. And uh, I mean, long story short, we ended up having a, just reseal the parking lot. But, <laughs> oh, yeah. but nonetheless, that was my first first experience with Tony. Like, I'm just, like, telling myself, I'm like, I'm not blowing this opportunity. Right. And then well, this I, fucking guy comes along. <laughs> I had no clue how big the opportunity was <laughs> that I almost blew. That's how fucked off I was. Um, I was 21, you know, drinking my just drinking my balls off. They were doing uh, Jaeger bombs at the VFW right down the street. I did a fucking burnout from the VFW in the parking lot, another burnout. And it was like, but I was drinking like the mugs of yeah, it was <laughs> blackout drunk shit, right? So I did a big burnout, parked the truck. I think I left it running. Get out the next morning and I or get out, <clears throat> go in the kitchen area. And just outside the kitchen area, there's a smoker section. There's a big concrete ashtray. And I picked it up and I fucking body slammed it on the concrete and blew up everywhere. Took the fire extinguisher, shot it off all outside and shit and fucking around. <laughs> go to bed. Wake up, <clears throat> hammer drunk still. Like, holy fuck, what did I do last night? And the big guy, uh, who the fuck was this guy's name? He looked like Conan O'Brien, but like a drunk version of Conan O'Brien. I can't remember the fuck his guy's name was, though, but probably the same guy when you were there. He gets there in the morning, and he sees the fucking burnout. There's two trucks in the parking lot that can make that mark. It was me and Jared Bushrow. You know, it was, yeah. a, it was a Ford and a Dodge, but everything else, there's no way those were that marks. So he gets up in the front of the class, and I'm like, oh, Oh, fuck. I'm like drunk still. I've got the shakes, you know. I'm like, I just want to cop to it and get out. <clears throat> you know, he's yelling, yelling at us, screaming at us. And you dumb motherfuckers. And just screaming at us. I'm like, I raised my hand like, hey, you know, just shut the fuck down. I'll, you fucking don't worry. You know, so I'm like, I wanted to like, you know, say it was me. He goes, you fucking, he goes, if it was up to me, I kick all you motherfuckers out of here. You guys should have been watching out for each other and all this shit, right? The instructor, he goes, he goes what's up to your instructors? You know, they're all linemen. They're all degenerates, too. You know, they don't care as much. They were, <laughs> so, they were all degenerates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, rightfully so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they, they get up in the front of the class. They kind of have a smirk on their face, like, <clears throat> we got to yell at you, well, even like, though we don't want to. Well, I was yeah. like, when I found out later, I'll, I'll tell you in a moment, it's kind of like, who, who was it? And nobody, nobody pointed me out. Nobody was like, it was him. For whatever reason, we all stuck to the story of we didn't know who it was. They're like, well, we know who it was. It was one of these two trucks. You know, we know who it was, but that's besides the point. He goes, if you guys are willing to reseal the whole driveway, we'll let it slide. And we also know you guys are probably all fucking broke right now because you've been off of work for three weeks because we're going to pay for this shit. You guys go do it after work. Well, that's a pretty good fucking deal. So we did it. And the whole class was like, I wasn't so, I mean, they kind of like after the day went on, they less and less hated me for it, you know? It's trauma bond. Yeah, it's trauma <laughs> for sure. And I found out years, so then years later, I become an all-bat instructor, right? And the whole time I'm in the apprenticeship and, and years you know, after, I always heard that that story was told, like generationally passed down. <laughs> Don't be a dumb fuck and do a big fucking burnout and you're going to kick you out. And they always told the story that they did kick the guy out. And I was always like, no, they didn't. Here I am. <laughs> I, I, I didn't kick him out. But um, I've talked to George Arhos about it years later because he was part of uh, all that. He was the Illinois coordinator at the time. I said, George, why didn't they kick me out? He goes, dude, they were all so impressed that none of you guys ratted on each other. You guys all stuck together. Brotherhood. And they're like, we like that. We were actually encouraged by that. And that's why we didn't kick anybody out. I was like, fuck yeah. Good. <laughs> pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. Pretty big uh, learning curve. For, I had no idea what I was about to throw away. 
And had I been kicked out of that, I never would have reapplied or never, you know, never would have known how good the trade was or never would have gave a shit. You know, I was a narrow back before. I would have gone back to doing narrow back things, you know. So Sounds like Shawshank. Yeah, it was pretty much like Shawshank. <laughs> <laughs> it was good shit. You know, it's interesting, though. Like, you, you don't see deep brotherhood stuff. No. A lot anymore, no. you know. Like, even within the yard, you know, it's it's bad. It's not as good as it used to be, and I think, like, right. our generation is definitely – holding on to it and i don't know that it's ever going to be as strong as it was for sure yeah there used to be the hate for the boundary was like all right it's right here this is the cruise and this is the gfs yep like even that the gfs like run another i side. know you're gonna fuck me over yeah the like, gfs run the other side of it yeah absolutely like the line was in the sand you are on your way to management like mm-hmm. i know you have your job to do but fuck you yep I don't trust you guys. Yeah, there's, there's a really good bond <clears throat> in the brotherhood, but I think with a new generation, it's more of a job than a career. I don't know if you guys see that too now. It's more of a job or it pays well. That's why I'm doing it. Yeah. Not because I want to do this shit. Well, then the other thing that the people with that mentality have, you know, it's a job, it pays well, that's why I want to do it, is they have no skill set coming in. Mm. So they're learning, a, they're learning how to fucking run a pair of pliers. On they're the learning job. how to be a man. Yeah, seriously, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a hard thing to do when you're getting a trade, and all of a sudden you worked at Walgreens. And they're last not week. always just 18, 19 year old, twenty or twenty right? year old no. kids. I mean, there's I've ran into guys that were in their thirties that I was like, how the fuck have you made it this far in life? Yeah. You know, what, and now you want to now you want to try and be in this trade? Yeah. And like, I, it's it, different it's, if they're coming from a different trade <clears throat> into that trade. They usually do okay. But yeah, they come from an office job or just because they're they weren't making it as an entrepreneur or weren't making it as a sales guy or whatever the fuck it was. And all of a sudden their uncle told him we'll be a lineman. Those guys have a hard time. It's like, where the fuck have you, where have you learned any kind of hard skills at all? Yeah. And I had, uh, I had an apprentice. It was the first year. It was probably two years ago. I mean, he had a wife, kids, family moved here from, uh, so called California somewhere. Mm. And literally his first time running a chainsaw, we were in the mountains. <laughs> we were cutting up a sauna tube in the middle of the mountains. Jesus. For, he was like, we had to show him how to run the choke, mm. like the whole shooting match. I, I just started like, everything. I was okay. just like, dude, like, man. that's weird. We ran out of farm kids, man. Yeah. The farm kids. I grew up on a farm kid. We used to call them city it's. City yeah. boys were city it's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I loved it. Remember that? Fucking local nine guys. Ugh. Sorry, local nine. I love you guys. Nine lighters. Yeah. Yeah. You're not all bad. I love you guys. Stop it. You guys are <laughs> fucking soft. <laughs> <laughs> fucking get all bent out of shape about fucking local nine being. Urgh. You guys know I love you. Stop it. Remember the time we had Jeremy on our crew? He almost died on the first fucking the heat. <clears throat> first day. Shout out to Jeremy Owens. You know, fucking yep. he, had, he had him as an apprentice. I swapped out apprentices, and it was Chicago heat is pretty brutal in summertime. It's pretty bad. Midwest, Chicago heat is pretty brutal. Yeah. This guy comes out, and he's wearing baggy clothes. To me, if you're really like the weight of a baggy shirt is a lot heavier than a tight-fitting shirt. And he wasn't fat, but he wore really baggy clothes. So he's soaking wet. In a baggy pair of pants, baggy T-shirt, ready to die before the job brief. I'm like, hey man, before the job brief gets going, just start stapling this ground molding on this pole. You know, we're doing Hendrix, so every pole gets fucking ground molding. I'm like, hey, while you're resting, just fucking do some ground molding. You know, so that 15 minutes go by, and I get the job brief. Like, All right, guys, let's huddle up. Let's go over the job brief. Let's go over the plan for the day. And he gets over there and he's fucking huffing and puffing. And I'm like, are you gonna fucking die on your first day? Like, <laughs> is this how it's gonna go? And he just looks at me and goes, I don't know, man. <laughs> and, he fucking, <laughs> and he was like, we're looking at, and Steve was always my barometer for heat because, you know, Steve, you know, served in Iraq and, and had the heat, or Afghanistan, sorry, right? And had some heat stroke out there. So susceptible to heat. So I always use Steve as a barometer, like, hey, if Steve's getting too hot, you know, we should all take it, take it easy. Steve was fine. And this kid was dying. I'm like, dude, Steve is the fucking the bar here. threw me off. Yeah. And if, if Steve's okay, you're okay. You're just being a bitch. Steve's, Go got, a, die. Steve's got a fucking excuse, you know? Like, and, uh, and I'm looking at Steve like, it's too hot. He goes, no. I'm like, fuck this guy then, you know? <laughs> and we go to Florida. That Remember in Florida, I'm, a fucking, I'm like, Jeremy, if you fucking die out of here, I'm going to fucking kill you. Because you stand, the, uh, open the door, turn the AC on, and you just work the radio and the AC. Have the AC blown on you. If a Rush song comes on or Tool or any of these fucking bands I don't like, you make sure you skip the song <laughs> you know, or change the station with XM yeah. radio. And then I had them tuned in to what songs I didn't like. And I'm like, and three stations turn back and forth from <laughs> If I got to hear a Tool song for more than 30 seconds, you're fired. So you <laughs> so he'd be in the radio pushing the presets to change the song. It was fucking awesome. That poor guy. But yeah, it was, uh, the heat was no joke for him, man. He was, 
I think he eventually got over it, but then, I don't know. I think he became a foreman. He's doing all right. But the heat for him was a real thing. But Once shit. you get heat stroke, that's... It's brutal after that's that, right? Oh, you're yeah. fucked, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're fucked for... I mean, you're fucked forever. Yeah, I've never done that. Did you guys both kind of susceptible to it then, pretty much? Is it pretty... What, what happens when you get it coming on? What, how do you feel it? I was cramped up the yeah. first. Can enough Usually water my forearms do it? And Can enough water do anything for you or no? No, I need electrolytes. Okay. Yeah, and good electrolytes, not that shit they give us at work. <clears throat> okay. What do you guys use? What, any any brands you guys like that work? Tailwind. Okay. It's a endurance athlete kind of a supplement. Okay. For dudes like they kind of do like the David Goggins stuff, mm -hmm. you know, the ultra marathons and shit yeah. like that. Called Tailwind. Tailwind, yeah. Okay. It's actually made in Denver. I want to say Durango. Or not, not Denver, Colorado. It's made in okay. Durango. But, uh, yeah, it's got loads of sodium in it, some sugars and stuff. For, I mean, the concoctions are different for electrolytes, but that sure. one works for me. Okay. So. All right. What about you? Yeah, I've never tried that one. I, I actually would just end it up just ordering. What's up, guys? I know you're enjoying the podcast, but I want to pause this. I want to bring some attention to my sponsors, um, Telson Tequila. I want to go over a few cool little facts with these guys. So they are from Las Vegas, and there's thousands of tequilas in the world. Telson is one out of only 40 tequila brands that owns their own distillery. So it's super unique. It's a big flex, right? It's really fucking cool. So based out of Las Vegas, super rad. Check them out. Use our discount code, finad 20 TelsoneTequila.com. We're in uh, old school OR, ORS packets, the, okay. the salt packets. That, yeah. So I knew those worked. They yeah. gave us in the military, so. Okay. Um, How would that? Kind of an acquired taste. Yeah, just, my stuff's Just flavored. slam it or what? I'll get with you. Just slam with it? And yeah. You, and, okay. Gotcha. My stuff is like a, I mix it in like a, a jug and drink it all day. I gotcha. Yeah. You slam one and then just drink the rest all day? Or are you like trying to get one in your system right away? Or just, you got to get ahead of it by drinking one all day long? <clears throat> I... Well, it depends on the day, but I just try to stay hydrated with it all day. I gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. You remember, we, we were looking for shit at GNC for Jeremy on that store. Remember, there was like, right. what the fuck would we end up getting him? Something. Like some magnesium? There was something we got him that pretty much saved his dude's something. life. Something. Yeah. The safety fag wanted to send him home. That's right. Because if yeah. he's going to fucking be this bad, we're going to send his ass home. I'm like, nah, I want this grunt around for something. You know, yeah. Fucking lose me a truck and a crew. So. Yeah. Yeah, we ended up saving his job and saving him. But... What else? What else do you guys want to jump into? Anything else you guys want? Any other stories you guys got that we haven't touched on yet that can be at least PG-13? <laughs> Don't got to edit out, Josh? <laughs> no. <clears throat> nope. Nothing? Hmm. Come on, Josh. You got to have something. Ah. Uh, How about every time we chat, we always ask, anybody get fuck shot Fuck, is lately? it dark? <laughs> Man, is it dark when we talk. How about when uh, we always ask if someone got shot at work? Yeah, we, that's we had a, a every mutual time we buddy we hate bonded over, get shot at work, we didn't die. Our lives would be so, think of how much our lives would be different. You actually told me about that. Yeah, I think I was <laughs> shit. I was working somewhere else, or I, I was working somewhere else in town. Yeah, and you called me up, fuck, seven o'clock at night. Yeah, I was like, hey, did you hear this? I was like, no. Yeah, our GF that everyone fucking hates. He's, he fucking sucks. You still yeah. work there, so I won't use his name, but well, whatever. He gets shot by some ex deranged bitch. He was banging was some off. He's banging some office chick. He was going through a divorce, banging the office chick. She wasn't even that hot, like by any means. Um, she finds out he's banging somebody else yet again. She goes ballistic. Fucking, he tries breaking it off with her, and she's like, "Okay, it's meet me at the park." And she, they go to the fucking some forest preserve or park or some shit. No, and then she pulls out a. Go ahead. It was right, or it was right across the. Uh Shit, by the 7-Eleven there, that park right by the, it was the, park. By the Ace. Okay. Yeah, okay. By it was the kind Ace of a right park, there. kind of a parking yeah. lot or a big park, whatever. And yeah. it was like, hey, he's meeting me over here. And I guess they met there, and she pulled out a gun and started shooting at him. And she hits him with one shot, I believe, uh -huh. in, in the ribs or somewhere, and it's, <clears throat> you know, livable, right? But her gun jams for some reason, right, or whatever it was. Her gun jams, otherwise he'd probably be smoked. And then she fucking, he runs off and <laughs> gets his shit together, and she fucking gets her gun together and drives somewhere and, Blows her head off in the company truck and shit, and it was a big deal. It's pretty cool. It was the secretary that did this it? Is the secretary ended up killing wild. herself. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Fuck. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. So we all get the phone call. Hey, he's been shot, but he's okay. I'm like, okay. And six months later, I get fired. I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> 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 I wish I got fucking shot in the face. <laughs> no. Just kidding. If you ever see this, just kidding. I'm glad you're not dead. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know what the uh, how the conversations go with the other guys, but it is... Uh, 
We go it's, pretty dark. It's dark, like like most. But what is that? What? Why is that so fun for us? What do you think that is? Uh, child abuse, <laughs> <laughs> mental disorders. <laughs> I mean, listen. All three of us get along at a certain level. And all of us. I mean, I'd say everyone in this room would laugh at the same jokes we laugh at. Yeah. But you and I are weird. We're at weird, different a, levels. Darker. It's a one. <laughs> it's kind of a one step thing. I feel like. You're trying to help like me. when you when you say something, I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah, Here we it's go. Like, it's like bad cop, bad cop. You got to come in stronger. Yeah, <laughs> come out over the top. <laughs> Fucking Billy clubs. First things first. Mm-hmm. Just yep. Trying to one up so, each other. It gets pretty dark pretty fast. Yeah, I'm, I don't know why, but I, I think mainly is I feel like it's uh, it's in all of us. It is. But you and I just not only that is I feel like you and I can feed off of each other. Sure. And just just run with it. I think it's again it's in all of us. A lot of people are afraid to say it. For for fear of hurting somebody else or fear of being cancer, whatever it is, I look at it as well, life's one big joke. Either nothing's funny or everything's funny. Yeah. To me, everything's funny. Yeah. So if we can make the fucked up jokes and you know, not actually go out there and do the same shit. It's whatever. But. I mean, we have been fucking belly laughing <laughs> in some fucking dark pizza shit. place <laughs> in, at whatever time in the morning after seeing some seeing some rock shows, and it yep. is some of the funnest fucking times ever. Yep. And it's nothing. Nothing yeah. about. No, yeah. It's, it's good. It's good. I enjoy it. Good shit. Ace, you got anything else? What have you seen on this whole journey of 21 episodes? You know, have you seen kind of the growth <laughs> and the or lack of growth? I don't know. What have you seen? <laughs> Man, that's tough. Um, I wanted you to be part of this episode. You haven't said a fucking word the whole time. It's been good. <laughs> You've been laughing at least. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so it's been interesting to see you grow from being your street version to being more of like a podcast host, which I, it, it's, it's getting so dark, but I still like that you're still keeping your authenticity. Cause okay. You're not taking it too professionally, so I think a lot of people like that. The viewers have been talking about that too. Really? Yeah. You, you're the one, he kind of tells me, because I don't, I rarely ever go back and watch the episodes. <clears throat> I'll, I'll watch the first, I'll watch whatever clip we post. But I have yet to sit back and watch a full episode back. And not that I, I don't know why that is, but um, he always tells me the feedback we're getting or, hey, we're up to what, 300 some odd subscribers, which is we're substantial, like almost which is substantial. I mean, that's and YouTube world is real because you can't fake that. You can't buy that. You can't everything else. You can you can buy subscribers. You can buy likes YouTube for whatever reason. You can maybe elaborate on that. You can't. But we're getting some traction on YouTube. That's pretty sustainable, pretty, pretty substantial to where it has. There are local podcasts in this city, been around for much longer than me. We're years, kill, we're killing them, years. killing them. And I'm yeah. just, this is probably the most raw episode. But I mean, whatever, for whatever reason, people are liking it, so yeah. it's going good. You do have haters too. I love the haters, yeah, dude. No, he good. Hell yeah. I haven't seen them though. I want to see them. I haven't. Bring them. I'm on. glad you do have them. I know, hey, right? Hey. You're like, fuck, I hate you too. Yeah, yeah fuck, I hate that <laughs> motherfucker too. <laughs> some hate bonding over me. Yeah, fuck it. Let's talk shit on him in the fuck fucking yeah, comments. dude. Get him, get him stirred up for me. Go ahead. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Think, I mean, from the ones that you've had, you just—I mean, people. There's always haters that want like toys and shit, right? Okay, like, cool. And yeah, yeah. You've had a couple people. Like, oh, you know where there's been a lot? The Freemason episode. They—they they hate that one. They don't hate it, but you know you have questions. Oh yeah, yeah. Back and forth with that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. And one of my good friends is a Freemason. That episode blew up because of the Freemason, yeah. uh, the searchable shit, right? Yeah. Brian's episode did really well. I, mean, I like that one. Cool. That you watched that one too? Yeah, yeah I like that, that one. Cool. That was good. That, yeah, Brian, Brian Slagle, you know, a good friend of mine, and, and cheers to him for accepting to come on. He didn't need to do that. He's a fucking, you know, guy in his 60s, well accomplished, has all the money he'll ever need. He had no reason to take time out of his day. To, I mean, he did it. And it was fucking super cool and super rad. It was a cool episode. Yeah, yeah that was a good almost, one. It's almost at 20,000. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. fucking rad. I mean, nice. for YouTube, that's a, a fuck yeah, ton. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, one thing we'll probably start doing is paying for ads. I think ad, paying for ads, he was telling me how much of a big deal that is. It's like, what, 500 bucks? So we'll start paying for that, you know, as... A little bit of money goes such a long way. Yeah, and yeah. And it's organic, too. Right. So it's not, you're not buying anything. Right. You're getting actual traffic. This, this whole episode might tank us, though. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how this thing goes. Probably puts us right in the shitter. It'll be all right. Uh, fuck, they said too many... You have to get Brian back on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Gary. Get Brian Lappy on this motherfucker. <laughs> on you fucking bitch. <laughs> Yep. So what? Brian Lappy. One of the reasons I hated him, because I, I already hated him anyway, but then one of the times 
He tried fucking over my buddy. He's a big drug addict too at some point in his life. But he tried to fucking over one of my buddies before I even met him about stealing a chop saw. That never happened. And my buddy who was accused of this, his dad owned a bobcat dealer. He had access to every fucking tool he ever would have needed. He had no reason to ever steal a, bob, a fucking chop saw. And he accused him of it and to the point where it got him shipped out to Kentucky, which in all that is like a fucking death sentence. Might as well be Auschwitz. Go to fucking Kentucky. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're taking a much lower scale in a shithole part of the country. Well, he gets shipped over there because of this accusations. And it comes out later that he was full of shit. And like in several things, lappy has been, a, he's one of those guys who is a good hand. I'll give him the credit of being a good hand, but impossible to work with. It's a, it's yeah, a fucking terrible, I've, terrible dude, right? I seen the I so, seen the impossible in this firsthand. Yeah, so in, it's like uh, fuck that guy. You can't. Illinois. What I learned, yeah. and and John Hazy's another one, and and whatever this may go viral, may not. He may, John may never see this. But John was one of my first foremen, and what I like like about John was John was a good hand, and and very confident in his abilities, but impossible to work with. And you can't. And what he taught me was that the only thing he ever taught me was you can't build power lines alone, because nobody wanted to work with that motherfucker. To this day, his own cousin doesn't want to work with him. Right, so it's like Lappy and fucking Hazi are two peas in a pod, and they hate each other, which is awesome. <laughs> so yeah, those guys taught me you can't build power lines alone. It's funny. You know? I worked with John. Yeah, so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah exactly. Good yeah. hand. Yeah, put him up there with the best. If there's a fucking Olympic sport for building power lines, <clears throat> maybe he takes gold medal right by himself. If he can find a task by, by himself. himself, by him fucking who is, himself. Who's the cousin you're talking about? Uh, Matt Walensky. Oh, <clears throat> very good friend of mine. Do you know his? Brother-in-law, I think. Uh, Bedock, Big John. John. Yeah. yeah Bedock. Sweetheart. Yeah. Sweetheart. Yeah, great dude. The opposite yeah. of the way you look at him, he looks like a fucking monster. Oh, yeah. Sweetheart. He was great one dude. Of, he was yeah. one of my foremen. Yeah. I don't think those guys work together anymore. No. Well, Nobody can work with John anymore. I'm I mean, it's you. been years since yeah. I've but seen Again, I'm not trying to rag anybody. If this gets out there, you know, we'll have a beer. We'll talk about it. But, like, the facts are the facts. And, <clears throat> and either John or Brian will probably agree with me. They have a hard time working with people. They think they're the best gift to line work or whatever the fuck the reasoning is. But... I'm not the only person saying this. Like these guys are hard to work with. Anyhow, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, as an apprentice, I was working around those guys. I was working for Big John. Then Posse came around, and you know we were. There's no linemen. It was all foremen, apprentices. Yeah. I mean, we were doing high line in the Midwest, mm. and that's kind of the way it goes. No linemen stick around because there's no money that yep. you know they can go make. No linemen money. stick around because John's there. Well, that <laughs> and there is another foreman from Minnesota that was in the, our area. Nobody had worked for him, yeah. you know, and as a, I want to say like, a, I was a first step. Him and I got into it on the right of way. Like I had went after him. Oh yeah. And another, I've had that same story. Different another guy foreman yeah. had to break us up. He's like, no, 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 you don't want to fucking do that. He's like, it's your career, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a grown ass man, man first. first. Right. Yep. Yep. You know, and uh, I got sent home, whatever. And John kind of stood up for me on behalf of me to the GF. Big John big, or Big John? Okay, I hadn't met Hasi yet, and uh, I didn't know that yet. And on the following Monday, because I got the weekend off, I went in on the following Monday. Went and talked to the GF. I was like, "Yo, just want to talk to you about what happened on Friday, whatever." You know, because he didn't see me. He just sent me home. He's like, "Go home for the week and come back Monday." Yeah. You know, and uh, I was like, "I don't want to work for that." I'm like, I'll keep working for that guy. I was like, "Cause this job's almost done." I'll try to keep my gun in my cooler. But, but uh, <laughs> I was like, uh, I'll keep working for him. But I was like, after this job, if you decide to keep me, great. But I don't want to work for him on the next job. I want to work for someone else. Or you can lay me off, fire me, if I'm even going to stay here for you. And all he said was like, all right, Matt, appreciate it. He's like, go get your boots on. Get ready for work. I was like, cool. So I went back to work. Same guy that I almost got into it with. Yeah. You know, finished out the job. We had like a month left. Finished up that job, went on to the next one. And I got bumped over to... Uh, nice. Big John's crew. Yeah. And then shortly thereafter is when Hasi showed up. And again, no lineman. And Hasi was cocksuckering me one day because I wasn't taking the shovel out of fucking another yep. apprentice's yep. hand or whatever. Yep. And Big John stood up. He's like, shut the fuck up. He's like, he's doing his own thing. Leave him the fuck alone, you know? Yep. And so John's so bad. If, if you're around him, it's exhausting to be around. And you'll even watch him belittle somebody else so much that it annoys you. Yeah. Like he'd be talking about somebody else. It drives you fucking nuts. It's yeah. like, I don't know. And, and I'll go back to John. So and hopefully this all gets clipped together so it makes more sense. But, like, he kind of saved my job, too, because, um, I, I mean, I had a mouth on me as an apprentice. I think maybe all of us did, or maybe I probably had the biggest mouth as an apprentice, <laughs> right? I, I can't help it. I, I still can't help it. It's part of who I am. But there's nobody who's going to outwork me, right? So I lost um, my license as an apprentice. <clears throat> I had an incident that happened long before I got in the trade. 
all the shit happened while I was in the trade, and I lost my license. Too many tickets as a fucking 21-year-old, right? Which in Illinois is a big thing. So I got too many tickets, lose my license. Well, right when all this goes down, 2008, work's slowing down big time. And everyone before the work, before the load came, I was like, hey, listen, dude, it's done. But before that happened, it was like, hey, who wants to go to Missouri on a wind farm? I raised my hand. Hey, I'll, I'll go. Fuck it, you know? And uh, some other people did too. A couple weeks later, if they're basically taking a head count. Who wants to go versus who, who, who wants to go without any pressure? Who wants to go because they have to? So I, I raised it early, and uh, shit comes down, lose my license, and you know John never let me live that down. Oh, you fucking, uh, you can't fucking drive. And uh, Joe Willie had to drive. The, remember Joe Willie? Burn him down, Joe. He had to drive the digger truck one time. I drove his pickup because I didn't have a CDL because I had I had a, a worker's permit, but it was only for pickups. Right. So anyhow, John vouches for me. Say, listen, you know Slayer. They called me Slayer at the time. But Slayer is a great hand. No license or not. Wind farm, a perfect spot for him. I'll take him with me on the wind farm. So he does. So like he vouched for me. He knew I was a good hand, but fucking how pain in the ass to work for. We get down there, and he drags up to go on hurricane. It's great. It's like fucking. So he gets me on the job. He fucking leaves. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. So yeah, John. You know who you are. If you see this, don't don't take it the wrong way, you little fucking bitch. You know. No, after him and you I, know you're hard to work with, but we're good. To, we can drink beer together. You know. Yeah, him and I have talked many times. Yeah. You know, a handful of times since then. You know, like after we quit working together, or whatever yeah. stuff. So we've talked. He called me up. Yeah, but Usually. again, he taught me it was a very valuable lesson, man. Was, and and the reason it was so valuable because he was so good. Well, that was the other thing. It's like, dude, he's really good. But like, man, if you can't work, you cannot build power lines by yourself. That was the other thing. So like, like you said, and the guy that I got into it with, mm-hmm. he was a fucking good hand. He was an yeah. old boy. He was like 150 pounds soaking wet. He's doing high line in the Midwest, which we're doing double circuit, bundle, T2 shit. Mm-hmm. And this dude... He knew how to do his rigging. He knew yeah. his steps. He was he he was a chess master. Yeah, I was not. I was a fucking zero step. I was a one step. Yeah, you know, I didn't fucking know shit. And the biggest issue I had is his lack of communication. I was like, and I would ask why, and he'd be like, "Cause I fucking said so," and that fucking annoys me. I know. Me. Cause you think, like, back, to mil- need to think know, back to military shit. You're like, I'm I need not to know why anymore. you want it like this, so I know what to look for next time. Yep. Like. You can't keep just saying because I because I said so. Like, well, I also learned too after, especially getting out of the trade, is that guys in the trade are not communicators. They don't know how to express themselves. They just know how to fucking be grunts, right? Right. When you get out of the trade, you realize okay, the rest of the world actually communicates, right? Yeah. And linemen are not good communi- communicators. So the I said so is not even because they want to be assholes because they don't know how to express. They cannot tell you why. Right. They don't know why. They're just doing because that's how they were taught. Right. They cannot break it down, so they resort to being an asshole. Deep down, if you have, hey man, why is if you were to, if you try to be cool with them, they still can't do it, right? Because they're fucking Neanderthals. They know how to do it. They can do the work. Not most guys are not good teachers, and then they get become a foreman because they're good. Yeah, doesn't mean they're a good foreman. And then, so I worked with that guy. He was good. That's why I told my GF, I was like, I'll keep working for him because I was like, I am learning shit. Yeah, you know, when I can get him to show me shit and you know communicate. And then same thing when Hossie was around. You know, he knew shit like he knew rigging and stuff like that. I was learning a lot. And I had a good buddy, uh, Scott, who was working on the same line on the opposite end of the sub. Mm. MJ was building in. This other company Scott was working for was building out. Same exact shit. I was like, how's it going over there? He's like, like dog shit. He's like, it sucks over here. He's like, we're constantly fighting this, this, and this. Like, had all these issues. And, like, they had linemen. Yeah. And they had, like, full crews and stuff like that. I was thinking, we're skeleton crew. Like, we're a fucking foreman, a couple of apprentices, cold apprentices. And operators, and like we were just slaying shit, but it was due to the GF being dialed as fuck, mm-hmm. you know, and then the foreman being really skilled, just not necessarily people skills, right, right. yeah. but they were fucking skilled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, all right, you show me once, I know how to rig it up to do yep. butt block and all this other shit. Like we can, we can rig this stuff ourselves, you know, me and the operator, whatever, we get it figured out. But like I just had to be shown once and told who, what, and where, and why. Yep. Like, you know, so that's why I was like, I was fortunate enough to work around guys like that where I was able to learn, mm-hmm. even if it was difficult to learn from them. Yeah. You know, but I, it was well worth it. Yeah. And I've never seen you actually interact with apprentices, but you seem very patient and don't want to pass it on to them. You want to, Absolutely I mean, not. I think in line work too is a very, uh, it's a very almost like a parenting thing, right? It's like line work is either you're going to be the guy that you were, that someone was to you, or you're going to change that. Same with parenting, right? You're either going to be yeah. an asshole because your dad was an asshole. Or you're gonna stop that and be a different person because you don't like that, right? And line works the same way. Yeah. I was treated like shit, and I'm like, I'm never gonna. I mean, 
some guys may disagree, <clears throat> but I didn't ever treat them like shit that either didn't have it coming or didn't at least get a little bit of patience to begin with. Eventually, right. some guys are just pieces of shit, and you kind of have to be yeah. that way with them. But I was never the guy that it was to me. You know, I'll give everyone a chance till they, you know, yeah, prove until, till they don't deserve a chance yeah. anymore. I remember one guy was so fucking bad, and um, I made him just hold a sign up for a, like a garage sale sign to block the sun as I'm operating the back mach backyard machine. I'm like, you're so fucking useless. I remember Just stand that. here <laughs> and hold this sign up to block the sun from my eyeballs. Yeah. I switched the guy out with, with our traffic crew. Yeah. I made him go. go fucking hold the, yep. the slow stop sign. Yep. I was like, you can take a break. Go sit in your truck. <coughs> traffic guy in Chicago was sitting in his truck. I had him prance out there fucking, fucking flipping awesome. paddles. That's awesome. I love that. Oh, anything else? Steve, you got anything cool? I can think of off the top of my head here. <clears throat> there's some funny stories in here. I just don't know how they relate to. I mean, there's the, your nephew had a book of. <laughs> oh, we get some random text messages back and forth. Okay, so me and Steve will randomly text my brother and I run a. It's me, him, and my brother on a, a group text, and we get this random photo album of a book report that his nephew did on Hitler, and it was <laughs> the fucking most off the wall shit. You want to explain how you came across that? Um, yeah, I mean, my sister. Pull the mic just, up a little bit. My sister uh, shared it with me. He uh, could do a book report on anything. <laughs> and um, her, she's super smart. She's a teacher. She always has her kids reading all sorts of books, anything. Um, and my, my niece is like two years older than him. And she, somehow she got really into World War II. Mm. So he's kind of following in her footsteps, being like, oh, what's going on with World War II? How old is this kid? Six, seven or something. <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> It's usually like a middle-aged man thing. <laughs> he gets in World um, War II. <laughs> I and I just was dying laughing when she sent me the pictures. It's just these the, the funniest cartoon caricatures of like Hitler, just like a guy, but like it has the mustache, so it's it's, it's visible clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly, yeah. And um, and then the the heading of the book report was Hitler. <laughs> so just just seeing, and then he's writing like. Uh, you know, Hitler was a horrible person. He did this and that and blah, blah, blah. But it was just like six photos of him. It's pretty fucking just, intense. I don't know. It was, it was just great. Yeah. Uh, luckily, he didn't get in any trouble, which, you know, why would he? But <laughs> I'm sure there's some, some teachers out there. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that was definitely, that was definitely a random <laughs> text I had to share with I think enough time, with you. time and tragedy equals comedy, right? I mean, there's plenty of time in his past. It's whatever. That's fair. Anyhow. All right, let's wrap this up. You guys are awesome. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate Thank you guys. You. Thanks for coming along. Support me along the way. <clears throat> um, it means a lot from the support side of things. You guys have been supportive the whole way through, uh, business wise, you know, podcast wise. I appreciate it. Cheers. Thanks, Ace. <laughs>